Stockholm, a city renowned for its vibrant art scene, witnessed the birth of an ambitious project in the summer of 2024. This project was set to change the way people interacted with art and culture. Naom, the brainchild of Angelica Broman and her father, Jana Broman, aimed to redefine the museum experience. They envisioned a space that was not just a repository of art, but a living, breathing entity that engaged all the senses. This wasn't just about hushed galleries and roped off masterpieces. It was about creating an environment where art could be experienced in new and exciting ways. Naum promised a fusion of art, entertainment and commerce, all under one roof. It was a place where the boundaries between different forms of creativity would blur. Imagine stepping into a 3,200 square meter space in the heart of Stockholm. This vast area was designed to be more than just a gallery. It was a playground for the imagination. You're greeted by striking contemporary art, but there's music in the air. The ambient lighting changes with the mood, creating a dynamic atmosphere. A live band is playing, and the aroma of freshly brewed coffee wafts from a nearby cafe. This isn't just a museum, it's a sensory experience. This was the experience Naom wanted to create, a place where art was not just seen, but felt, heard, and even tasted. They envisioned a space where you could lose yourself in an exhibition, enjoy a craft cocktail, and browse unique artisan goods. It was a place where every visit could be different, offering new experiences each time. Nayon was more than just a museum, it was an experience. It was a place where art and life intersected, creating a vibrant cultural tapestry. It was designed to be a cultural hub, a place where art lovers, social butterflies and curious minds could come together. It was a melting pot of ideas and creativity. It was a bold vision, a departure from the traditional museum model. Naom was about breaking the mold and setting new standards for what a museum could be. The buzz surrounding Naom was palpable. People were excited about this new concept and couldn't wait to see it for themselves. People were drawn to its innovative concept, its promise of a multi-sensory experience. It was a place where art was not just observed, but lived. Initial reviews were positive, praising the project's ambition and its potential to revitalize the city's cultural scene. Critics lauded its innovative approach and the way it brought art to life. Naom, it seemed, was on the cusp of something special. It was more than just a museum. It was a new way of experiencing art and culture. The summer of 2024 was a whirlwind for Naom. There was excitement, there was energy, a palpable buzz that seemed to electrify the air. The art community was a buzz with anticipation and Naom was at the heart of it all. And then there was silence, a deafening, unexpected silence that left everyone in shock. Just months after its grand opening, news broke that sent shockwaves through Stockholm's art community. Naum had filed for bankruptcy. The announcement was sudden, catching everyone off guard. The closure was sudden, unexpected and brutal. It felt like a rug had been pulled from under the feet of the art world. One day, Naum was a hive of activity, a beacon of innovation, it was a place where creativity thrived, where artists and art lovers gathered to celebrate the beauty of human expression. The next, it was a ghost of its former self, its doors shuttered, its future uncertain. The vibrant energy that once filled its halls was replaced by an eerie stillness. The speed at which the project unraveled left many reeling, struggling to comprehend how such a promising venture could collapse so quickly. It was as if the very foundation of their dreams had crumbled. The news spread like wildfire, 
leaving behind a trail of questions and confusion. Conversations in cafes, homes and studios were dominated by the shocking turn of events. Whispers of financial mismanagement and low visitor numbers filled the void left by Naomi's absence. Speculations ran rampant, each theory more unsettling than the last. The art world held its breath, wondering how a project with so much potential could have faltered so dramatically. It was a mystery that seemed to have no clear answers. The closure of Naomi wasn't just a logistical setback, it was an emotional blow. Artists who had poured their hearts into their work were left devastated. It was a stark reminder of the fragility of the art world, of the precarious balance between creativity and commerce. The dream of a thriving cultural hub had been shattered. For many, it felt like a dream cut short, a vibrant chapter abruptly ripped from Stockholm's cultural narrative. The city was left to mourn the loss of what could have been a beacon of hope that had flickered out too soon. The closure of Naom had a ripple effect, impacting not just the institution itself, but also the lives of the artists it had championed. The gallery had been a beacon of hope and a platform for emerging talents, making its sudden shutdown all the more devastating. Among them was Malin Bernolt, a talented jewellery designer whose story serves as a cautionary tale of the vulnerabilities artists face in the face of such unforeseen circumstances. Malin had always dreamed of having her work recognised on a larger scale, and Naomi had seemed like the perfect opportunity. Malin had poured her heart and soul into her craft. Each piece she created was not just a product, but a piece of her identity, meticulously designed and crafted with passion and precision. Her jewellery, each piece uniquely crafted, was a testament to her talent and dedication. The intricate designs and the quality of her work spoke volumes about her commitment to her art. When Naomi offered to feature her work in their newly opened space, she was ecstatic. It was a dream come true, a chance to reach a broader audience and to see her creations appreciated by art lovers and collectors alike. This was her chance to showcase her creations to a wider audience, to gain recognition for her artistry. The gallery's reputation promised exposure that could elevate her career to new heights. A consignment agreement was signed, a standard practice in the art world. This agreement meant that while the gallery would display and sell her work, Marlen would retain ownership until a sale was made. Marlen's jewellery was displayed in Naomi's retail space, available for purchase by the public. The beautifully lit displays showcased her pieces in the best possible light, attracting potential buyers. It was an exciting time, filled with hope and the anticipation of new opportunities. Marlin felt a sense of accomplishment and pride as she saw her work being admired by visitors. But as Naomi's financial troubles came to light, Marlin's excitement turned to dread. The gallery's financial instability cast a dark shadow over her bright future. The news of Naomi's bankruptcy hit Marlin hard. It was a blow, not just to her finances, but to her dreams and aspirations. Not only was she facing the potential loss of income from the sale of her jewellery, but she was also grappling with the possibility of her creations being swallowed by the legal quagmire of bankruptcy proceedings. The thought of losing her precious pieces to the chaos of legal battles was heart-wrenching. It was a nightmare scenario for any artist, a stark reminder of the risks inherent in entrusting their work to third parties. Marlin's story is a poignant example of the precarious nature of the art world, where dreams can be shattered in an instant by forces beyond one's control.
As the dust settled on Naomi's closure, Malin, like many other artists, found herself caught in a web of legal complexities. The consignment agreement, once a symbol of opportunity, now felt like a double-edged sword. Legally, her jewellery, held within Naomi's inventory, was considered part of the bankruptcy estate. The situation was as frustrating as it was bewildering and disheartening. Marlin wasn't a creditor, she was an artist. Her jewellery wasn't just stock, it was a reflection of her creativity, her passion, her livelihood. But the law, it seemed, didn't differentiate between canvases and earrings, sculptures and necklaces. The bankruptcy trustee, tasked with untangling Naomi's financial affairs, offered a glimmer of hope. Artists like Marlin, who had placed their work on consignment, could file a claim for their unsold pieces. It was a small comfort, a long shot in a system that often seemed stacked against individual creators. Navigating the legal labyrinth was a daunting prospect for Marlin. The process was lengthy, complex and emotionally draining for her. She found herself caught between lawyers, creditors and the weight of a system that often felt indifferent to the plight of individual artists caught in the crossfire.